Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? Now already many things have been said about Macron, Emmanuel Macron, and his inconsistencies and hypocrisies have been outlined by many commentators, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Today I just wanted to kind of highlight one comment that he made and the ridiculousness of that comment. That comment he put on Twitter. He said secularism never killed anybody. And this is a ridiculous comment on so many grounds. Number one is a historical because we can easily, anybody, any beginner student of history can point to Stalin and Lenin and Mao, the obvious examples, to point out the, the falsity of this claim. But more than this, France itself, and this should not be forgotten here, France itself had annexed Algeria for 132 years in the most brutal colonizing enterprise of the modern era. In this time, one million people were killed and martyred from the Algerian population. So much so that historians refer to this as a genocide, where 15% of the uh, indigenous population were killed, raped, tortured. So much so that a book called La Question, which was published and censored, I might add, censored from the French population, outlines the torturous methods that these French colonizers employed, raping, pillaging, and killing a million people. One million people. Can you imagine? We already know that 24 skulls of Algerian people were were transferred to Algeria recently. But do you know that in books like La Question, which was censored once again from the French population, such torturous methods as putting military equipment in the private parts, the penises of men, and mutilating such private areas, and, add, and, and shoving instruments into the private parts of Muslim women, was done, raping, killing, torturing, mutilating. How dare he? How dare he, from just a historical perspective, come out with this claim, secularism has never killed anybody. Now, am I attributing this to the pure political philosophy which is referred to as secularism? No, because secularism doesn't necessarily lead to these kinds of things. But my point is this. Secularism is not incompatible with authoritarianism, dictatorship, or even Nazism. Now, this is my claim. Secularism, which merely proposes a separation between church and state, between the religious order and the political order, doesn't necessitate that people are tortured and colonized in this way, in an expansionist and power-hungry way, but it does allow it it's compatible with these things because if one believes in a political philosophy like nazism for example and one is secular at the same time then there is no contradiction in the minds of those authoritarians of those dictators of those brutal monstrous men of which some of macron's predecessors are some of these monstrous men, colonizers, secularists, they don't see any contradiction between coupling the political philosophy, which is secularism, with those notions. So when Macron says secularism doesn't ki hasn't killed anybody, he is, he is vomiting nonsense. He is talking rubbish. And quite frankly, he needs to be educated more than he already is. Now, as the weasel that he is, Macron the weasel, he is going back to those Muslim countries, asking them to stop the boycott. But we're not going to stop the boycott. I don't drink Evian. Evian anymore. I don't drink that. And I think the Muslims in, this, in the UK, the US, and the West have stopped drinking Evian. Because the only Evian we remember is the Evian Conference in 1962, where finally the Algerians were allowed their independence 58 years ago. And that is what we will remind you of in terms of Ivyan. And moreover, I want to remind you of something else. It's already been demonstrated. 
But in your legislation, Macron, and yes, I know somebody out there is going to translate my English words to French so that you can hear what I'm saying right now. In your legislation, Holocaust denying is actually illegal. This is well known. In fact, there is a legislation, the Gayot Act, which disallows Holocaust denying. Now, wait a minute. The question is, why is freedom of speech impeded in this instance? If your entire pretext here is that freedom of speech should not be impeded and therefore the drawing of offensive cartoons should be allowed, then what about offense to another minority group? Because if I ask you, do you agree with the fact that, that there's a legislative injunction which stops people from denying the Holocaust? You would have to agree with the legislation, otherwise you'd have to oppose it. Now, do you oppose it? Do those individuals who are so proudly putting up pictures of the prophet, so-called prophet, which actually is a figment of their imagination, are those individuals also happy to say, yes, we will allow Holocaust denial, but not only that, but mocking the Holocaust as well? How about that? Because look, if we want to use freedom of speech as a pretext for all offensive actions towards minority groups, and not only minority groups, any group, then the question is how far are you willing to push the envelope? Those same individuals who are p uh, p picking up pictures that they are saying as the Prophet Muhammad and it's probably someone from their family because that's what they remember or something like that, would they also have the guts and audacity to offend the Jewish community by mock not only denying the Holocaust, but by mocking the Holocaust? That's what I want to see, that level of consistency with your principle of freedom of expression and freedom of speech. But you wouldn't mock the Holocaust and you wouldn't stand like in this film, Die Hard 3 in Harlem with a sign saying, I hate niggers. The reason why you wouldn't do that is because you fear for the consequences. That's the reality. Well, unfortunately for me and for you, those monstrous terrorists are creating consequences, which allows us all to fear for them. So what do you want the world to be like? Do you want it to be divided? Do you want it to... What is in the best interest of our communities, both Muslim and non-Muslim? If we provoke those extremists and radicals, or if we decide not to use symbols of disrespect with a quarter of the world's population. I would say the latter makes more sense to me. But Macron, you've made your grave. You've dug your grave, Macron. Now you're going to have to lie in it. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.